All righty. Today is Minority Alliance Entrepreneurship Topic Meeting. Today we're going to talk, talk about minority entrepreneurship and how we could probably create more opportunities for minorities through different areas in entrepreneurship and where there are lacks of representation in certain areas. Now, I want to start today with the question, why is it important for more minorities to pursue entrepreneurship? And Mark, you know, it's me and you, I guess, today, so we'll take off and we'll just bounce ideas across each other. Absolutely. So, I, you know, just in growing up, um, you know, where I grew up, west side of Detroit, you know, I saw almost no you know, black owned businesses whatsoever. You know, you either saw uh places that, you know, like used to be there and aren't there, or you see places that are already corporate chain kind of, you know, part of the general machine places. You know, big grocery store, uh brand name gas station, things like that. Um, one of the things that would elevate um any type of community, whether it's a Jewish community, whether it's a Asian community, a Hindu community, a Hispanic community, or in our case, a black community, having a foothold in business and having a circulation, a circulatory uh, economy where you have money that's, you know, being made in the neighborhood, being spent in the neighborhood, it elevates the neighborhood, you know, on its own. It begins to uh, take shape as you know, businesses take hold and as uh, the influence of those businesses grow, they're able to employ people, people are able to get job training. That in turn uh, helps the flow of economy in an area. Um, the people living in the area are able to do better. Uh, you'll see, you know, better housing in that area. You can see housing that can be competitive with the housing markets in other areas just by being able to get some sort of economic foothold into a neighborhood and you know so getting some minority owned businesses in a minority area is vital to you know getting it getting a neighborhood off the ground if it, if it starts off in a bad place you know that's going to be you know one of the first steps to getting it you know out of that and into a better place is by having some sort of economic foothold so that's what I, that's why I, where I think that comes in. Yes, sir. And I mean, I most definitely agree on that. And I think that, you know, the more opportunity that it is within a neighborhood for people to do better, it creates an environment for everyone around, you know what I'm saying, to do better. And to start, as you said, you know, you start to see better establishments popping up, you know, more well taken care of, you know, establishments instead of, these beat down restaurants and then you still got to eat there because that's all, you know, with, is within your area, even though, you know, or either it's either that or drive all the way to the other side of town sometimes. So we got to, we got to fix in our infrastructure first more so than anything. And that begins at the bottom with building businesses that we can do business with and we feel comfortable doing business with. Yeah. So my next question would be, what are some areas of entrepreneurship and where there's a lack of minority representation that you feel? Well, one of the biggest problems that we see in uh, minority-owned businesses in the neighborhood, at least you know, from what I've seen in my own experience, is that there's not a lot of uh, you know, specialty kind of thing. There are no clothing stores. There are no malls. There are no movie theaters, uh, which you'll see a lot of times when it comes to the, uh, a lot of minority-owned businesses, you'll see a dry cleaners, you'll see auto shops, you'll see restaurants, but not a lot of things that uh, are, will go further into, you know, elevating an area. Not a lot of law offices, you know, doctor's offices, not a lot of um, specialty type things, a, a place where you can get a, a computer fix, not just your car, you know, different things like that, being able to, you know, kind of bring some different skill sets into the area where a person going to work for them, uh, you know, 16 year old, 17 year old actually, you know, can learn a skill, you know, not just on a car repair, but 
you know, learning an actual skill with that, you know, becoming SAE certified or, you know, learning about, you know, how to deal with, um, you know, body work and things like that, how to deal with foreign cars, how to deal with exotics, how to deal with um, all sorts of different things that come into the neighborhoods and the areas and when you go outside of, you know, minority communities, the type of businesses that you can see, you know, uh, an actual tailor, you know, all those different things. I mean, I can literally list off probably a hundred different uh, types of skilled position businesses that you'll find in so many other places, but you're not finding them in a lot of minority communities. And, you know, back, go, when you go back, if you go back to the 80s and even before then, you, you definitely see those things. Because as we talked about on a previous call, uh, that used to be something, you know, vocational training used to be something you came out of high school with. You came out of high school knowing how to weld, how to, how to sew, how to do basic plumbing and basic auto repair work. And, you know, as they transitioned that, as schools became more about profit than they came about education, you know, you, you would see those things transition away from public education into the private sector and into, uh, into for-profit colleges. So a lot of those skilled positions that you would see in those neighborhoods, you know, the, the all those different things that I just mentioned, they began to wither away and disappear and they ended up into suburban areas and different neighborhoods where those people could A, afford to go to school for those skills and B, you know, they just had more community support. So I think, you know, being able to get more skilled uh, business representation into those neighborhoods is also a big step in moving them forward. Yes, sir. And I mean, I do as I said, I mean, I agree with every point you normally make. You make some very valid points. But, I mean, even more so than the skill, you know, places and certain technical places of that sort, I mean, I believe in our own communities. We should own our own grocery stores. We should. I heard a good uh, example from somebody the other day. They said, why is there no black-owned dollar store? I mean, when we shop at the dollar store, you know, dollar store, dollar tree, dollar general, more than any other race probably. You know, I mean, that's just the honest truth. You know, why shouldn't we be profiting? off of you know that income ourselves instead of we're just helping build somebody else's business so that was probably one of the best you know examples of a type of business that i've heard this week in which we could implement i mean you know that's something we could start with if that's the only thing we do you know we can at least build you know stores that cater more so to the things that we need the things that we use instead of we're spending our money with other races gas stations you know, certain areas within our community that we use on the daily. So that's, you know, from my point of view, that's what we need to try to take over in those industries more so than anything. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, when, when you consider, uh, you know, dollar, take Dollar Tree, for example, you know, those are kind of everywhere. And those are mainly, you know, franchisees. I mean, it, those ones aren't even that hard to get into. So, you know, it is, it is kind of a wonder why more don't, you know, kind of go in that direction. So, you know, it, it does have more, more minority patronage than, you know, maybe any other type of, you know, lower end retail. So that is, that's a very good point. Yes, sir. Most definitely. So my next question would be personally, why do you feel that there's a higher percentage of minority businesses that fail? more so than any other type of businesses, you know, I mean, because normally, you know, people get into business and in that first year, you know, they do so bad. It, I believe it becomes a hindrance, you know, on certain personal things they have in their life that, you know, they may not be able to, you know, keep going within their business or they don't have faith that they will bounce back that next year. I mean, that's my personal opinion, but I want to hear a little bit from you. I think that is a part of it. I think there's a financial element to it, like you said, where uh, a person just isn't seeing those returns. And a lot of times you, when, you, when you're dealing with minority-owned businesses, just in the way that we are um, a little less, you know, inclined when it comes to, like, uh, just the ownership in general. Like, do you, know, do you own your own home and things like that, the type of collateral and things that they use to get those initial investments. We don't, a lot of them don't come from money. They're trying to build up from scratch. So a lot of times when they take a shot, they get one shot. You know, they don't get a lot of uh, help from in investment wise when it comes to, you know, working with banks and the type of collateral that you can use to get a business off the ground. 
you know, one of the things that, you know, because I've, I've worked in restaurants, you know, for my whole life. And, you know, one of the things that they tell you, one of the first things they tell you when it comes to owning a restaurant, if you would like to make a little bit of money, the first thing you're going to need is a lot of money. So there's a lot of um, investment risk when it comes to that. And a lot of times, you know, with a minority owned business, you take that risk alone and you have to weigh the profit and loss, the risk reward of that gamble every single day. Another problem is uh, the, the general mentality. When you're going into neighborhoods like that, there is, you know, we talked about this before many, uh, on some of the other calls, is this defeated mentality in the neighborhoods. Like anything, anytime you see a business grand opening, people are looking at it almost as a countdown to a grand closing. And there, there isn't like a, a mentality of like, you know, this is a minority owned business in our neighborhood. Someone chose here, someone chose us, and we're trying, and we're going to do better. Like, I'm going to shop there. I'm going to get my things from there. If, uh, you know, they, you know, somebody opens up a minority, you know, uh, whether it be a shoe store, or whether it be a Dollar General or something like that, like, I'm going to get my stuff from there. That's not usually the a mentality of his. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, this is here for now. So I think there's an uphill battle with the confidence of a neighborhood of, you know, this is here and this is going to be here a while. This is going to be a this is going to become a part of the community, an actual staple in the community. Um, there isn't a lot of outreach, both from neighborhood to that business and from that business to that community, as to you know actually being a part of it. And then the third thing is um, you know, just brand recognition and the messaging, uh, because you're going up against you know depending on what business it is, you're going up against monsters sometimes, and it, it's hard to compete. You know, a mom and pop retail store cannot compete with a with a Walmart um, half a mile away, and it, it's very difficult. And if, if people aren't you know patronizing your product, if there isn't a lot, if there isn't like targeted marketing, if there isn't things that you know uh, uh, that really ingratiates itself to those people to go out of their way and to go out of and to break a normal routine and become a part of that and you know. T- touch in with those businesses and those, give those businesses an opportunity to touch in with them. You know, they don't have, you know, a son or a daughter who's going to work there and they don't, you know, th- th- that part, that isn't part of the school. There isn't a poster from that, uh, from that business in the local school and things like that. You know, it, it becomes very complacent and all those things kind of combine together and make it very, very hard to survive from year to year. I and mean, there's a tremendous amount of pressure in the first few years of getting a business off the ground and a lot of, and most succumb to that pressure because it's coming in from all sides. So personally, I, I would say in that aspect, it would take an initiative amongst all of us to agree to do, as you said, you know, support minority owned businesses, even if it does take you out of your way, you know, more so than, okay, Walmart, you know, maybe, five minutes and you know a minority owned business maybe 10 minutes you know sometimes we gotta take that extra five minutes to go out the way and support our own because you're you're right that's one of the biggest issues and i mean i could see that if we made an initiative that we're not going to shop at walmart no more we're not going to shop at kroger's anymore we're going to specifically go out our way to shop with our own we would be building profits for our own we would be building creating more avenues for our own because we would help build these businesses and Walmart would dwindle down a little bit from what it currently is. I mean, you, that's just the the smartest aspect I could think of it in, you know? So, I mean, it's just going to take us, you know, honestly going out of our way and supporting our own. I do believe that. And I believe that's where it starts. And then, yeah. uh, my, yes, sir. Oh, I was just, just going to say to piggyback off what you're saying, um, I think one of the things that the major corporations count on is general complacency. Like, they, like this is a well rehearsed, well worked on campaign of complacency of what what's cheapest, what's most convenient, and it, you know, kind of trying to install change is difficult and sometimes a little more expensive. But it takes like a, a constant top of mind, you know, understanding. One of the things that I found that, that I, uh, I like, and I, I forgot to tag you on this, I got to tag you on this uh, uh, soon, is uh, there's a group in San Antonio here in Texas, it's about an hour south of where I live, and they uh, they have a little group on there where they're just calling out and identifying black-owned restaurants. And, you know, some of them are kind of, some of them are kind of far from where people live and, you know, different little things, but 
one of the cool things about it is, you know, what they what they kind of did in building up their little network is that people are going to these restaurants and, you know, they, they post pictures of their food every time they go. And then they, hey, you know, there's a vegan place over there. Or, hey, there's a soul food place over here. And, it, and you know, it's, it's kind of like building that network. And I, I, you know, I would love to know the numbers of it, you know, to get the actual data. But I'm pretty sure those businesses are doing better since people are doing that because people are going out of their way. They're like, oh, you know what? You know, I'm, you know, I was born in Florida and my mom's Haitian and, you know, we can't get any Haitian food anywhere. Like, hey, well, you know what, this black owned one right over there. And, you know, and they're going to go see those things. I think every, every city and every community, we're going to, you know, need to start having businesses like that, not just restaurants, but in businesses in general where we can call each other out and use the power of social media, use the power of the internet to kind of reach out and actually do what it was meant for, which is connect and start pushing us you know, towards that thing, because it, it needs to stay top of mind. Complacency is something that the big corporations have been counting on for years, and people have been feeding it. And we're going to have to, you know, kind of wean ourselves off of it and kind of, you know, look into something else and be able to connect ourselves. Yes, sir. My next question would be, now, why do you feel it is important going forward that we as minorities support businesses owned by minorities? And, I mean, we basically – already answered that one with everything that we've said so i mean in in the biggest aspect it it all dwindles down to we just really got to push with this new i guess new wave or new feeling that people have finally woken up to realize what is going on in our country and the inequality that is going on in our country and i mean it takes us to build that ourselves we're asking for something from everybody else that we're not even willing to start with ourselves. And I believe that's where it starts. We have to do for ourselves. And, you know, I believe along the way that other people, that other people will realize what's going on and take notice. And as I said, you know, people are normally have the mindset of a follower for some reason, instead of a, you know, a leader. And, you know, if that's, what it is and that's what it is but let's follow each other in the right direction instead of keep following each other in the wrong direction is my i mean that's just what it is at the end of the day so yeah i mean i think i think it comes down to like you know what is it that everybody's looking for and this comes around you know generations in between you know generations of gaps in between moments where things actually can change. I mean, people yearn for change all the time, but it, it, only a few times does it actually does it actually present itself with an opportunity. I mean, we had that opportunity in the 60s, and, you know, people went out there and they paid a heavy price to try and get that thing going. And But they were able to do it, and you're able to see those cracks in the wall, and you're able to see some daylight in what we were trying to do, and, and, and we were able to accomplish some of those things. You know, it did come at horrific cost, but those things did happen. And we are in one of those times again where we are seeing, you know, real cracks in the wall. I mean, you know, the Redskins are changing the name. You know, some of these things are going down, you know, and there are real answers to the, the, the questions. I mean, people have always been able to ask you for the questions to distract you. You know, oh, what about black on black crime? Oh, well, you know, how much of our history do we want to tear down? And that are real answers. You know, how much, how many statues do we want to tear down? I don't know. How many racist ones you got? You know, we actually have some places to go with that. And we can, you know, now is a perfect time, you know, for anybody that, that, that has that, that dream and has that idea and wants to launch and wants to, you know, go into their own neighborhoods and, you know, and build and, you know, even if it's, you know, not in your neighborhood, but you want to, you know, start up a minority owned business and you, want to get something done there is more attention now towards minority success than there has been in generations and maybe ever because now we actually have the ability to reach people and the people have the, a chance to see some of the atrocities and some of the garbage that's going on in real time for the first time ever we're not they're not waiting on a newspaper to give them their news they're not waiting on a somebody to go on a nightly news and hope that they tell the truth you have the ability to find it yourself. And people are now, you know, we're getting more and more people awake. There's still a ton of people asleep, but there's a lot of people that are waking up. And now is a, a you know, a better time than perhaps any other to be able to look into a minority-owned business and for that minority-owned business to actually get that foothold that we were talking about. Because it is the building block. Having businesses and having a, a, a 
a self-generating economy inside of your own neighborhood is, is literally the cure for all that ails it. So, you know, it's going to branch out to everything. It's going to branch into the education. It's going to branch into bringing crime down. It's going to branch into the general morale of the neighborhood. It's going to branch into lowering, you know, teen pregnancies and incarcerations, all of that stuff. It's all going to begin with there being some movement in the neighborhoods to where you do not, your, your life isn't hopeless because you were born over here. That's like the key to everything. So, you know, it starts on that ground level and being able to do something about our own economy and, our own, and where we live is going to be, you know, the foundational building block towards that. Yes, sir. And then I have a little question outside of the box, just with it being, you know, current news this week. I mean, mm -hmm. us just now find out that, you know, Viacom, one of the companies that owns, you know, they own MTV, they own BET, they make tremendous amounts of money off minority entertainment, basically. When it all dwindles down, I mean, even with the sense of Nick Cannon, whether you totally agree with his views or not, you know, just because I don't agree with someone's views is not a reason when you gross me this amount of money. I basically made this much money off of you. I just personally don't agree with your views. So for that, I'm going to fire you, you know, and I'm going to ruin something that has created jobs for many other minorities is basically what you have done now. So in turn, you have not just only, you know, ruined one person in that aspect, you've ruined other people's careers per se in their lives, which I don't believe you've ruined their careers because, you know, for some reason, I feel like this time we will find our own avenues. And I do believe, you know, if a, a person with the type of wealth or these celebrities who are minority celebrities with all this wealth, if they just took the time to get together and create their own thing, say Nick Cannon and LeBron and Tyler Perry and Oprah, if you guys all came together and created your own networks, you know, we would be getting the, as I said, the money would be flowing to our own. And I mean, not to be, you know, in the sense of that, but of course people would still watch other shows and things of that nature on certain networks that you can't get. But I mean, you know, we have to create a certain sense of wealth amongst ourselves is what it was my true belief. So, I mean, I just wanted to hear your opinion on, you know, how Viacom did in that sense. Oh, well, they, you know, business is always going to be business. And you know, where this all ties into systemic racism and how that word just goes from racism to systemic racism is understanding that the way business flows off, you know, being offended is big business these days. By moving some things around and you, you know, and, and, and taking advantage of cancel culture, you can you can push you know your own kind of narrative on things. I do find it interesting that Nick Cannon gets fired for what he did, and Deshaun Jackson has to go on an apology tour, and now we're trying to, to ruin Stephen Jackson's life and stuff like that. But I don't really see too many people putting a gun to Gus to Tucker Carlson's head when he goes up there night after night and says the black people are coming for you. That's an actual quote. Um, you know, so there's definitely a system in place to where, you know, we're okay with this, we're okay with that, but don't challenge our system, uh, you know, of authority, you know, and, and the, the third rail of that has always been speaking on anything, any and everything Jewish. You know, and that's fine. I mean, you, you want to go there, you go there. But people need to understand that um, they will attempt to ruin you when it comes to these things. So that's why we, as a minority, you know, need to support what we're doing here. You know, did someone, you know, should we support it when someone speaks out of turn? Not necessarily, but I advocate for nobody's firing on that. Even we have freedom of speech or you don't. And, and, you know, there, I've seen way too many examples of people going off the rails and, what they, and, and saying all sorts of horrific racist things. And the only thing that they get is a vacation. And, you know, it's past time that, you know, people are able to say, you know, fine, you're saying that you can go ahead and fire this man because, you know, somebody may boycott our advertisers. Well, okay, then we need to boycott you. Because, you know, this, you know, this, this man, if he has an opinion, if it's an unpopular opinion, I'm sure he's got an email. I'm sure he's got an inbox. And I'm sure he can, you know, I'm sure if somebody, if someone's offended at whatever they say, then, they, then the aggrieved party can reach out to him and they can educate him or they can, you know, come with their point and their counterpoint and things like that. They didn't, you know, they chose not to do that. So 
I am not a Nick Cannon fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I tell you this, support him 100% on this. And I know that, uh, you know, some, for some of the, the brothers that, you know, brothers and sisters that did lose their jobs, you know, because they were associated with him or, you know, because of the shows and things like that, like, these are the things that where a, a situation becomes worse and where a situation goes from being just a, a, a problem to a systemic problem. Like, it, it really is. Now, I do agree with you there. We have a lot of powerful young black millionaires out there. If there were a Nick Cannon, Kevin Hart, LeBron James, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of other ones, people have done that. You see it on a small scale. You know, Le- LeBron and his crew, they got together. They got, you know, they got strong. They made millions. They got a, 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 an agency. You know, they're, they're representing people. They're making things happen. That's awesome. But they can do so much more. If we, if we can get together and do that and we can decide, okay, you know, you got the, uh, the I Promise School, LeBron School. Awesome. That is perfect. That, it's that type of example. There should be stuff like that going on all over the country. We have enough, you know, there are enough people out there. There are enough millionaires out there. They just have to have the will to, you know, be able to stand up there and be up front. I mean, there are going to be people who are going to down, who are going to denigrate you anyway, who are going to try to cancel you because that's always been the way to keep it in line. You know, you know the, the, it was that famous Chris Rock line, the number one rule to being black in Hollywood is not to piss the white people off. Like, that used to be a thing. You know, we're in a day where that can actually change. If people are willing to, you know, step out there and do what you're doing, like, like Nick Cannon did in this case, and some others who have, you know, who have done that. But there should be more of a, a front. We've seen the examples. We've seen the examples where, you know, you go after one person and a whole lot of people of that same group stand up and go, oh, yeah, no, you're not doing this to our guy. And I think there's going to have to be more of that from the minority communities, you know, not, not just black to black, but minorities in general, because all of us, again, for no matter how big, no matter how famous, you get one shot. In most cases, you get one shot. People still protest when Michael Vick walks into buildings. This many years later, like, this is what I'm talking about. You know, there's still people running around there. They're trying to ruin Deshaun Jackson's career. Riley Cooper got a contract extension after saying what he said on video. We have to recognize that's the reality and what, you know, we have an opportunity to do something about it now. Because they do have some pool. There are more stars than there's ever been before. There are more millionaire, multi-millionaire branded athletes than ever before recognize that power use that power and we can all elevate on it yes sir and that's a very amazing a very amazing point that uh, i believe you have made on that end because i mean at the end of the day it's going to take everybody and as you said you know lebron does have his school and lebron has you know his thing going on top Perry has this thing going on and i think that's one of the biggest issue within minority uh communities period whether you know you're in a, a different bracket, tax bracket minority community, or you're in a lower tax bracket minority community. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that we don't feel that we can work together for some reason, or it's not even probably that is the sense of selfishness of, oh, well, I want this to be mine, or I want this to be mine. It's not all the time about something being yours. Sometimes it takes, you know, I mean, because within other communities, believe it or not, they work together a lot more than what you think. And that's how they are successful. That's how they do succeed because they're working together. It may not be in the sense of what we think it is, but I mean, you know, it's not all the time about something being, you know, single-handedly yours. You know, sometimes it takes a conglomerate coming together and building these things. If we had a minority conglomerate network for news, for, you know, cartoons for kids, you know, we have amazing ideas that we've been pushing our ideas through other networks and creating a ton of wealth for people beyond our own you know skin color i mean basically at the end of the day and that's to me that's it's time for a change at the end of the day absolutely if if you had uh minor if minorities had ownership stake in a sports team for example how quick is that sports team to get rid of a black player because he said something but light didn't like 
You know, it wouldn't happen. The more we have as far as, you know, our, our ability to put ourselves together and put each other and pick each other up and say, okay, we are all, you know, in this together. Yes, you're going to make your own money. Yes, you're trying to get, you know, you're trying to be your own thing. You're trying to get rich. You're trying to do your own thing. But that's above a certain level. We all need, you know, once you get under a certain threshold, we're all in this together and, and they need to be able to, you know, come together on those things. You know, you're exactly right. There is an alumni of people who will come together when you go against certain minor, when you go against certain communities, when you go against certain ideals, things like that. It's a basic understanding. If this, if this wire is tripped, we're all on this. And then, you know, you go out and you make your money or whatever. But there, there's a hand, there are handshake agreements on all these things. There are non-compete agreements. There are, there are places where this business goes in this direction versus another one going in this direction. You know, Walmart and Target will sell similar products, but, out, you know, they will do this while this other one does that. Because there's a handshake agreement on how we're going to get the money, how we're going to, you know, capture those dollars on these different things and how we're going to continue to elevate because, you know, you're not going to stay on top doing it alone. That's not how it works. And one of the things that they've been very successful at is, you know, giving minorities things that don't belong to us. It wasn't ours. And by giving it to us their way, we kind of took it on in their vision. Uh, you can see that in Christianity. You can see that in everything, and it's and it's also true in our economics. We have a very remedial understanding of what capitalism actually is, and because of that, you know, when people start making money, you know, I got to get mine. I got to get mine. You'll hear that. You'll hear that phrase so many times, but you don't understand that those other people, while they're getting theirs, there's also some things you can't penetrate because they're all in that together and they've all kind of put money together and make this wall and they, and they have this fund and they have these different things that you can't touch and it helps elevate those things. You don't just buy the house in the Jamaica, in the gated community. You got to be let in. How did that happen? <laughs> because they built that. And, you know, we, we have to learn how to, and understand how those things are done. And some of those people who have begun to make it, and you do have those, you know, who are, who've gotten into the club and who make that kind of money and things like that. And now it's time to kind of get together and pull together and create that on a different level so that minorities can raise as well. Yes, sir. I believe a ton of excellent points have been made tonight. I believe that, you know, this has been one of the, as I said, I mean, last week I was impressed with our meeting and, you know, coming together and brainstorming ideas. And today, I mean, you've helped me unlock certain ideas on my end. I mean, that's what this is for. And I said uh, every week, you know, I only hope that more people can join us because the more of us that come together and brainstorm together, eventually these avenues, you'll start seeing people take these ideas and create these avenues. And that's all this takes is us putting it out there for people to just, you know, that light bulb to come on maybe in somebody else's head, even if it's not a certain avenue that I want to go in personally, you want to go in personally, but we should be bouncing these ideas off of each other so that we understand what direction we need to continue and the things that we need to do to advance our own communities. And that's in such of that nature. But I mean, I thank you again, Marcus, for another awesome, you know, meeting today. And I mean, as I hope, you know, I only hope more people come week after week so that we can continue, you know, getting this thing in the right direction in which it should be. So thank you again, sir. You have a great one. You too. Take it easy. Most definitely. Yes, sir.